What is up guys and girls, Hurricane Liz here and I'm about to cover a video or redo a video I did way back in the day. I can't even remember how far back it was. But since that time, that video has become one of my most popular videos of all time. And I just can't figure it out. I don't know why, but you people want to find out about audiobooks. So today I'm going to cover a lot of information about audiobooks, but primarily it's going to be a step-by-step -step guide on how to do audiobooks. And we're talking about on Audible, the world's best marketplace for that. And finally, it's long overdue, so I apologize, but you guys have a lot of questions and I'm going to answer them today. Today, that's exactly what you're going to get. Audiobooks, a step-by-step -step guide for 2022 and beyond and how to go about starting on audiobooks right now. So I'm super fired up for this. Clearly, I have so many words about it. I know you're fired up. Let's do this. All right, so let's talk about this. I put out this video on audiobooks of way back in the day when I had a partner in the whole process, never did I imagine that it would get the kind of attention that it received, as well as the number of questions. I've got to be answering dozens of these a day. I'm not kidding with you, whether they're emails and or on the comments in that particular video. But today I decided to break it down a little further because I left people a little bit clueless about the whole topic. So let's talk a little bit more in depth about them and learn all it takes to succeed in audiobooks. So. I will say this much, just understand this part. You see me do a lot of videos about Amazon, about selling on Amazon, and there's a reason behind that. And that is because once you know one part of Amazon and you become good at it, that can be private label, it can be drop shipping, it could be selling KDP, it could be any one of those things, merch, t-shirts, you're gonna know all of Amazon because all it comes down to is three basic steps. Marketing, marketing, and marketing. If you can market one of those things, you can market anything on Amazon. And trust me when I say that money will come to you once you learn this skill. So everything that I apply to almost every type of sub niche of Amazon, it's the same crap that you do on every other niche that there is on Amazon. Audiobooks is no different, even though they're on Audible. Hot products are hot products regardless of the platform. Always just follow the hot products. You want to just make sure they don't have that much competition, but competition is healthy. You want to go into some awkward or weird niche like underwater basket weaving with dolphins. You don't really give two shits what the dolphins are doing under there. If they want to underwater basket weave all they want, allow them to do that. But you want to stick to really hot topics. So let's talk about the five step process to selling and being successful with audiobooks on Amazon. But before we jump into that, I will answer one of the biggest questions that I'm always asked about these audiobooks is, do I have to write them or do I just grab them off of Amazon? Yes, you 100% have to either write them or outsource the writing. So this is your own original work. You cannot take an existing book that is on Amazon, pull it off the shelf and then get it turned into an audiobook. It has to be an original piece from you and so, it goes a long way either if you can write and or if you're just plain flat out lazy like I am and re rather be laying on the couch eating some uh, freaking Cheetos and watching some TV or playing some video games, then you can outsource the entire process and it will cost you some money, but we'll talk about costs involved in this process in another video. However, my five step process for getting this audio book done, whether I'm doing it myself or I'm outsourcing it, starts with the phase that I like to call scan. So on, in the scan phase, it's pretty simple. We'll, we'll do a little bit of this at the end if we have time in this video. But what we like to do is we like to scan the nonfiction section. I'm looking for books that are on interesting topics that potentially I might have some sort of interest in. That way it's enjoyable for me to put the outline together for the ghostwriter and or write this thing if I decide to do that. Now, in addition to scanning for these nonfiction topics, I'm also jotting down particular keywords that I feel are associated with the book. That way I have a list of nonfiction books as well as a keyword that in the future are gonna turn out to be the list that I begin to choose from. So that is step one. I will sort of demonstrate what I'm talking about here at the end of this video but step one is scanning. Step two is planning it. Now we're down to we picked what we want to do. It's got good metrics and everything. Now we want to take care of the meat and potatoes of this whole system and we want to plan what the hell the book's going to be about, right? So this typically involves an outline and I know what you're thinking like I, I hate that shit too. Trust me when we had to do outlines when we were kids in school I'd be like ah. Oh. I'd cringe at what the teacher was saying and pretty much I flat out just didn't pay attention. I'd copy some other kids homework. And I don't want you to do that here. I don't want you copying other people's outlines or books. That'll get you in trouble. 
So you're going to outline the entire thing. You're going to think about what is this book about? What would my description contain? You're going to think about that. You're going to think about the title of the book. And then lastly, you're going to think about the cover of the book. So this is all part of the planning phase. Now, the next phase after you have everything planned and mapped out is the building phase. So in the building phase, we are going to hire a ghostwriter that has some sort of specialty in the area. And I'll show you in the future how to do that. You don't want to hire just any ass clown off the street that says they can write because chances are the book is not going to be of quality substance. And what that pretty much means is that in the future, your customers aren't going to be too excited about this. So they might leave you bad reviews. They might complain in the questions. They might send you bad emails and things like that. You don't want any of that. You want to put out a quality book. You want to put the quality book into the world, which is going to reap you rewards in the future for having this out there and teaching people whatever it is that they want to know or informing people with whatever they want to be informed of. So hiring is pretty easy. Just remember if you're not doing it yourself, if you're doing it yourself, you do have to become an expert, somewhat of an expert in the field. So you do have to study everything, look over things, read a lot and research, do all that good stuff. But if you're hiring someone, they should already have a lot of these qualifications that you require and it'll make it a lot less painful for you. All right, and the way that like everything is, the way that I set everything up with the system that I use, the next part is kind of like the repair phase. So the way that I look at it is we already laid the foundation of this. Let's take, let's for example, say it's a house. We laid the foundation, we've built, we've planned it out, we've built it, and now what we've got to do is we've got to make repairs, right? It's sort of like when you buy a house, a brand new house from a builder. You go and you move into the house and they tell you typically in the first year, shit's going to happen. There's going to be cracks on the wall. Something might break down. Give us a call. You've got a warranty on this first year. So this is like your warranty phase. This is the repair phase to get those cracks sealed up and all that good stuff. And that is, that comes at the end of the build phase. That's more or less like the repair phase. In the repair phase, we get a proofreader to look it over or an editor. We get the book nicely or better formatted. We add illustrations or anything that needs to be added in the book. And then finally, we make sure we put it all together. After that, it is ready to go when we hit the last and final phase of the whole thing, which is the sell phase. During the sell phase, we have already potentially even prepared some of the notes for the sales copy, but now we'll be writing and crafting the sales copy to tailor the book and to make sure that it makes the book look more attractive than it truly is. And so the sales copy gets done and the marketing or the marketing plan gets put into play. And then finally, we start running ads on this puppy because at the end of the day, as I said earlier, the most important parts of this whole process is marketing, marketing, and guess what? Marketing. So now we put everything together and we have a complete and ready to sell book. It's ready to rock and roll. This book should bring us income from now until the end of the time. And typically what stops people from making income with these types of books is they have no plan in place to market the book at all. They just slap it up there. They put up a subpar book and then they expect to get sales and reviews and money. And at the end of the day, that's not going to happen without a quality book. So that is pretty much the gist of how I put an audio book together. Now, before I do leave, I will talk about a couple of book categories that I do like to look through. So usually what I like to do is just go to the bestsellers. I like to go into bestsellers and I look for books here and I scroll through there. And again, I look through all nonfiction books, which includes books that are on business and money, as well as books that are in health. I like to do those two particular sub niches of books and see what is going on. What's all the fuss about? Um, I also use a lot of other things. Uh, so this is like on productivity. It's about habits. And I look to see what is it that people are buying. I jot down ideas based on what I see. And then I think of what keywords someone might associate when they're looking for these particular books. Here's a keto cleanse. Here's another one on habits. Uh, we saw that Atomic Habits earlier, but it's another habits one. Here is, um, let's see if we see anything else. The Fiber Fueled Cookbook. So it's a fiber diet. Burn Fat Melt. And that might be popular right now because summertime is coming. Self Love. There's another one. So I just come through here and I jot down all of these ideas that there are. Now for some of us, one thing might spring an idea, others might not, but that is at least the start of getting 
an idea of what is popular. Now, the other thing that I will go ahead and also do is I'll go ahead and further sub niche this in, I'm in health, fitness, and dieting. I'll go into diets and weight loss. And from there, once again, I'll take a look at what's hot. We've got a body reset. We've got a plant diet, a gut renovation diet, a woman, a woman diet, extreme rapid fat loss, another ketogenic, which is probably outdone, bone broth diet, which is another interesting one. Here is another keto one, an anti-inflammatory diet. And I'll just go through here and jot down all these ideas. And again, I'll even further look at sub niches of that. We've got low carb, we've got paleo. If we could kick Click into paleo. It could potentially be some mom. No, oh, I thought it said mom, mom paleo. The pegan diet, whatever in the hell that is. There's the bone broth once again. And then I'll just continue to do this process over and over and look for ideas for books to potentially start. And in a future video, I'll show you how I sort of figure out out of all these ideas, which ones are too competitive, which ones are not that competitive, but are juicy AF, and then which ones I just don't even want to look at at all. So uh, that's pretty much it for this video. I know I went a little long, a little long winded. However, I hope that helps. And I hope that clarifies all the questions that you guys had on my original video. So I'm super fired up to continue talking about this topic. I'll see you guys in another video.